was good yeah this is going to be an updated sticks codex guide and the main reason for this is obviously now with the release of Helga, we have a more accessible source. Do keep in mind that uh, I wasn't able to uh, yet get Helga, so we'll be using a team that doesn't include Helga, but it is the same mechanics. So what we'll be doing is going over the units in this tier list, explaining a bit the way you build a team, and then go in a run, do a run, and be done. So, straight off the bat. Let's have a look at the tier list. We have a couple of categories, for example, S and A. Those are like the most popular units to uh, reduce the count. Then we have damage because damage is also very important. If you just destroy the shield but don't do damage in the vulnerability phase after you're basically not playing it properly, I guess. Then we have substitutes if you do not have like the top two units, all of them. And then we have like the other core parts of the units, which is going to be rage region or invigoration. So. Now, uh, ST units are pretty obvious. Praetus, because he has uh, he has his attacks, he has the summons that he summons around himself that also attack with him, and he has a slot bonus with which he can call down lightning that also strikes a certain number of times. Iowa, Iowa shouldn't be a surprise to anyone because he can summon up to 12 swords, he attacks a gazillion times with those, he also attacks rather fast himself. Setrim, Setrim obviously mainly referring to his ultimate where he does around a hundred hits in that ultimate but if you do have his exclusive artifact he obviously does even more hits and uh, I guess you could say Setrim without it is only like an A but overall still Setrim is super strong and if you have his exclusive do use it for sticks and then we have Helga. So Helga is obviously very very powerful for sticks and the way you build her is going to be pretty simple. You just build her normally like any other character and then you use an attack speed main stat. Yes, attack speed main stat instead of a normal attack percent piece on her. So then we have the A ranks which is going to be Lust, obviously depending on your awakenings, Sargak and then Calypso. Calypso, um, for her to become useful, you need to add around A1, and for her to become top tier, potentially S rank, you have to have her at A5, which is obviously pretty realistic, right? And then we have the damage category. So the most popular choices for the damage category are easily going to be Sealers. Just, just the Sealers to do massive damage while the boss is down. Then you have Soul Cadence and Valderon. All, all those three are quite popular choices that don't necessarily do a lot of hits, but they do pack a punch if you do get the shield down. And then we have the substitutes. Deimos, Deimos hits a lot of times in his ultimate. Tazira hits a lot of times in her ultimate, but you really have to be a bit desperate to use a Tazira. Then we obviously have Falchia. Falchia is Falchia, specialized attack speed given, attack speed amulet, and she's going to hit multiple times. Torador, Torador mainly for the fact that you would be relying on a full nightmare comp to uh, do your stuff and then just sprinkle in a little bit of Helga and then Vorov just in case because he also has specialized attacks. We those are like the most popular ones and um, then obviously you have Rage Region. If you have an Elowin you use the Elowin. If you have a Hollow, if you don't have an Elowin you use a Hollow and if you have a layer, you use a layer instead of a Hollow. So basically you go like this. Elowin. Come on. Can we, can we swap? Yeah. Elowin layer hollow. And then for invigoration, you have the choice to either use a Constance or a Dolores. Constance is the most popular because she doesn't take away a platform spot. And if you've noticed something that all of these units kind of do is that there are many platform units. And then you have Dolores. You can make Dolores work, especially if you're using Helga. And um, if you're using like, for example, a Nightmare team, you can definitely make a Dolores work with just the ground units. But uh, Constance is by far the most popular one out of the units right here. Alright, so now finally team building. How do you build the team? The answer is simple. You either go three hard hitters, so three that do a lot of hits, one damage dealer, one rage region, one invigoration, or four units that hit a lot, like for example Helga, Setrim, uh, Iowa and uh, Saga, right? Four units, one damage dealer, and then one invigoration unit. So you, you basically swap the rage region unit with another... Um, uh, another high hitter and that's the way you build a team let's go into a run and even though we aren't using Helga it is going to be the same run the same mechanics and the same way all right yeah honestly those are just the best units I have for this fight for example my Calypso is only a one uh, I do not 
own an Iowa. So what we're going with is a practice, uh, just for those interested in the gear, I'll be going through it briefly. So we have a lot of attack, high attacks, uh, decent attack speed, crit rate and then rather low crit damage. F uh, following it up with a tier of twilight. Constance is going to be an, an invigoration set, high attack, 40% uh, rage region and uh, astro obelisk. Setrum. Setrum is uh, in decent attack speeds, below 100% crit rate because we utilize his talent. Some nice crit damage. And then lastly, Bloodbond Signal because I do not own this exclusive artifact. If I had, I would probably be able to push like one phase further. Element, Element also the important part here is you get an invigoration set. Her stats truly don't matter at all. Mm, then we have uh, Lust. So Lust right here, really a uh, rather decent attack speed. The way we get 300 attack speed is by using a weapon that doesn't have attack but attack speed instead. Uh, some extra rage region and then her exclusive artifact. And the last one is going to be Silas. Silas is rocking 40% uh, rage region, around 100% attack, 220 crit damage, and then around like 180 attack. Uh, artifact wise, Spirit Siphon. So let's get into run. And honestly, like I said, don't really get uh, intimidated by the team. It is, it is really almost always the same thing, the same way you play this fight. So straight off the bat, we go in with, uh, we go in with Praetis, we give him Invigoration, we go in with Silas, we give him Invigoration, we bring in Lust, and we bring in Setrum. So a constant range obviously is really beneficial just for this kind of, uh, kind of way we're playing this. And there's obviously two things you can try to accomplish here. Either you just uh, try to kill the boss early, if you can afford it DPS wise, if not, you just play a, you just play a phase. So let's let's try it again and see if we can uh, beat the boss early. Honestly, beating the boss early is definitely not necessary, but uh, it does give you a slight advantage, I guess. Though to be fair, doing that without an A5 Sealers is um, probably pretty impossible. So yeah, obviously we uh, we then go with your early Sealers. We finish it up with the Constants, and by the time the boss gets his next uh, shield, uh, Silas and Constants are just going to be ready again. So the way the way you pray this is, uh, the boss is going to have his uh, time being like, oh, in 20 seconds he's going to start the shield, blah, 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 blah. And uh, then basically when the time starts ticking down, that's when you can uh, trigger your Setrum, because Setrum takes a bit of time to trigger to uh, get his shit, uh, to get his hits up. And then you go in with like your Lust and then your Praetis, for example, even Praetis ability. And when the shield is close to breaking, that is when you can activate your damage source and your uh, invigoration source. And then you just fast forward time and you pretty much do this over and over again because you're going to get a lot of rage region from the boss being down. So once more, the timer goes to zero, you activate your Setrum. Soul Keeper Shield activates, you activate your units. You uh, activate a couple hits extra. Shield looks close to breaking, activate Invigoration, activate damage unit, right? And uh, that's basically uh, that's basically it. So uh, obviously depending on gear, depending on uh, units use, your score is going to rise faster or slower. Here once more we'll be triggering Setrum. You might have to trigger Setrum a bit earlier if you have this exclusive artifact. But uh, yeah, honestly, that's that's really about it. So right here, we should still be able to break the shield rather comfortably. And um, we are, we are, what we are going to do is towards the end, we will be activating Silas uh, a bit earlier because Silas in his ultimate gets uh, obviously an extra shot through his arrow. And that is what we're most likely going to be needing to break uh, one of the next few shields. Here we go. And Soul Keeper Shield. Activate the abilities. We should still be pretty much fine here. Shield is close to breaking. Activate damage. Fast forward time. And here we're actually going to wait a bit with Satrum up until around. Uh, 70% I'd say. Like I said, really depends on if you have this exclusive artifact or not, right? For example, we don't. 
So here we actually be using uh, his uh, practice supportability at full power. Mm, but we should still be able to break the shield. Not comfortably, but we will be able to do it. There we go. So for the next shield, we're going to be a bit more careful and we're going to be uh, activating it a bit later. Do we have any hopes of breaking that shield? Maybe. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. We shall see. So here we go with Saturn. So Keeper Shield comes in, so we activate our ultimates. We go with everything we have, because this shield is dangerously high. And we activate whatever we have. We see, we hope, we pray, and we get wiped. So also there is always some slight RNG in there, right? There's always some slight RNG to will it work, will it not? Do you have the exclusive artifact, do you not, right? But overall, this is this is just the way you play it, right? You, you make sure that all your ultimates hit at the time of the shield. And yeah, this is how you can get high scores. And if you're wondering what is the difference between you and all these other guys, more, th more than it is gear, it is just the fact that these guys are uh, using hero set hit harder. For example, this Setrum, uh, basically here you have a Helga, right? The way it's built is with a crap ton of attack speed. So it's uh, up to 700 attack speed. The exclusive artifact for some extra rage region. And then you have Saturn right here for damage. Uh, Constance for damage. Him for damage. Even more hits. And then Iowa some more hits, right? It's all, it's all a question of do you have the hits to break the shield? And also what you're going to notice is all the high guys, right? Everyone in the top six and 9 out of 10 people in the top 10 are using Helga. If you continue further through it, you're going to see uh, up until the top 17, top 20. In the top 20, 18 out, of, uh, 18 out of 20 are using Helga. So yeah, this should be your call to go and use Helga. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I wasn't able to show it to you, but to be fair, I was so busy making the guides with, uh, with all the stuff and I was ill for the last three days, so if you look at this, we have stage 10 here, right? But I have played this on the test server. <laughs> We've done Eternal Spire completely on the test server. Uh, so yeah, I guess I guess it's a bit of a rambling of uh, me being in front of a big issue of... We're obviously going to get her, right? We're at 120, we still have a couple events to do. But <laughs> is this going to be a fun time trying to get the... Uh, um, trying to get uh, Idril. And then something something else because I, I think I don't want to make a specified video about it. For those with the uh, with the Oleg event, right? For me, it already disappeared. Uh, let's see, it disappeared completely for me. For those that know the Oleg event, in the Oleg event, just just buy everything until there is uh, there is basically an XP boost and um, a gold boost open, right? If you have two fields open. And you haven't gotten an XP boost or a gold bonus, you do not need to spend the 50 gems. But besides that, you spend the gems, you're going to get either summons or a stamina potion, which are both more worthy. And also, you're going to get three cakes, which is really, really generous. So yeah, this has been it. We see each other in the next one. Peace and bye-bye.